This short video provides an introduction to the work done by DCU on our assessment design project, which was conducted as one of the projects for our response to SATL 2020. The strategic focus of this funding call was transforming teaching and learning for student success. For this project, we focused on assessment design and how we could enhance student success through assessment design. The overarching goal of this project was to examine our existing assessment design processes and implement changes to current processes and provide CPD activities to enhance the quality of assessment within our program. The pivot to remote learning and assessment and the changed modes of assessment across many modules has brought a renewed need to review our assessment design process and the support and quality assurance policies. Feedback from students and staff has identified additional stresses and pressures from the volume of assessment and feedback to be dealt with and the condensed timelines for student assessment. Therefore, we decided to split this project into two overlapping phases, academic integrity and program assessment. And this project also involved technical enhancements to our VLE to support both academic integrity and programmatic approach to assessment. So underlying both elements is the technical enhancement. The first part of this project was in relation to program focus on assessment. Excusing the pun, but we focused on two elements in this respect, implementing the TESTA analysis and also the promotion of e-portfolios. Using the TESTA approach, which is transforming the experience of students through assessment, we conducted an assessment audit of five different programs. This involved 2,890 students across all years of those programs. We also uh, used this opportunity to interview staff with regards to their experience of assessments and where appropriate to promote the use of e-portfolios as an assessment tool, which can be used to support programmatic approach to assessment. These interviews with staff and, and these uh, subsequent discussions led to the provision of CPD uh, sessions on e-portfolio, the uses of e-portfolio, and the development of an e-book of case studies showcasing the use of e-portfolios across DCU. This e-book is available on our website and has already been downloaded more than 200 times. Just providing a little bit more detail on the TESTA element of the project. TESTA encourages us to view assessment at a program level. And a programmatic approach, as you know, to, uh, a programmatic approach to assessment can help in aligning assessment philosophies or can encourage a broader use of assessment and, and allow students to apply knowledge across the modules and indeed provide a vision for assessment change. And to understand how the test system might operate, we looked at five programs across four different faculties and each of these were nominated for the research associated with this project. In terms of data collection, we started a program assessment audit for each program. We then added an extra layer of data collection to the original TESTA framework to further explore our understandings and our possibilities of program assessment. And this extra layer was the program team focus groups and 32 staff participated in these. We administered 2,890 assessment experience questionnaires and conducted three focus groups. Each phase of the data collection informed the other, which is demonstrated by the multiple arrows on the screen. The second part of this assessment design project was focused on academic integrity. The project was influenced by the work of NAIN, which is the National Academic Integrity Network, and builds on the existing DCU TEU, that's the Teaching Enhancement Units, projects and initiatives. This element of the project acted as a tool for more focused conversations around academic integrity. It was designed to build capacity and to raise awareness of academic integrity with all DCU stakeholder groups and influence both cultural and ethical changes across the university. 
And this was done through a renewed sharing of the responsibility for the promotion of academic integrity. We hosted a series of student and staff events focused on academic integrity, including university-wide academic integrity awareness campaign. And these events included information sessions, staff and student panel discussions, and workshops for staff. Phase one of the project involved surveying all DCU stakeholders. And the survey take was quite disappointing, if I'm honest, which is 3.3%, but the staff response was much more favorable at 10%, nearly 11%. Phase two, um, phase two was the findings from the data analysis were shared with different stakeholders across the university and used as part of targeted conversations. We had eight of these targeted conversations with a variety of stakeholders, including students, associate deans for teaching and learning, academic council, the quality promotion committee and faculty committees. The idea being is to continue the conversation and to raise awareness and to allow these conversations to inform the focus groups in phase two. There were four focus group discussions, two with staff and two with students. And then there was the technical enhancements element of the project that I mentioned at the start. And there are several different technical enhancements. And just to go through them there on the, the Moodle quiz improvements, to make it easier for staff to create quizzes, to statistically analyze the responses and share them with other educators, share the questions with other educators. We improved the Moodle functionality to do that. We improved the peer assessment functionality and added new features to help assess group work. And for peer assessment specifically, we installed two new what's called sub plugins to make the process of peer assessment easier for the lecturer. Firstly, the participation credit plugin allows lecturers to mark, give marks to students for having completed the peer assessment task, whereas previously they were restricted to using the Moodle algorithm make that blunt assessment of student quality of work. This new plugin makes the grading more transparent for students and for lecturers. The second plugin was live allocation, which enhanced the peer assessment functionality by allowing students to submit their work late and still have it allocated for peer assessment. Previously, students would be locked out of the peer assessment process if they didn't meet the deadline. As for the use of uh, video-based assessments, because this has increased significantly in recent times, we've now developed the capability for staff to provide annotated feedback on a student video submissions, all within the VLE. With regards to text matching, while all of the assessments submitted to Moodle are automatically passed through our text matching software, this functionality did not stretch the e-portfolio-based assessments. So to address this in partnership with Catalyst UK, we enhanced the, the existing Mahoodle plugin, which is a plugin to integrate Moodle and our ePortfolio platform. Now, any ePortfolio submissions from students made via Moodle are automatically sent for text matching to our uh, text matching service. And a similarity report is automatically passed back to Moodle. This greatly supports academic integrity within, uh, within assessment. To support the curricular developments across DCU, we've developed a facility to enable self-assessment of competencies uh, for students. Finally, in a SATL 2019 project, we developed an assessment timeline report, giving lecturers a programmatic view of all of the assignments that our students have. As part of this project, we used funding to further enhance its functionality. So with respect to impact and sustainability, let's just take the technical enhancements. The quiz improvements that I mentioned earlier on, we collaborated with eight different universities across five different countries to improve the quiz. And all of our improvements are now in core Moodle, which means our project has impacted students from over 100,000 different Moodle instances worldwide. 
the integration of the text matching um, to the e-portfolio submission will be made available to over 1.6 million Mahara users worldwide. The self-assessment of competencies will be used for all of our DCU students as part of our transversal skills initiative, which is driving the integration of transversal skills with an all DCU program. Also, this new self-assessment functionality will be available for all Moodle users worldwide via the Moodle community network. And finally, the new peer and group assessment functionality, this improve and the improved assignment timeline and the video annotation capabilities, it's available to all DCU users beyond the lifetime of the project. And that's just the technology. If we were to go back to the TESTA, the TESTA reports that have came out, and we have reports for uh, at a faculty level, but also at a university level, the reports will help inform our assessment practices going forward and help reform our assessment practices to improve them based on uh, the findings that we have here within DCU. So I have absolutely no doubt that our project has made significant impact and will be sustainable well beyond the lifetime of the project. It now just remains for me to thank a huge thank you to the National Forum for providing the funding to facilitate these enhancements, uh, which will inevitably lead to student success. And to thank all of my team members for being involved and the staff and students that cooperated and, and supported the rollout of this project. For further information on any element of this project, please visit the Teaching Enhancement Unit's webpage within DCU or contact me directly at mark.glynn at dcu.ie.